So the title of my sermon today is called With Jesus. And the objective of my sermon is this. All believers can bring Jesus glory. All believers can bring Jesus glory. So if you are a believer, you can glorify God through your lifestyle. Okay? And so before we uh, dive into the text, let's, let's understand what is the background, what is the context of this chapter, okay? Remember, we, we learned that Peter and John was going to the temple to pray, not just going to the temple to pray, but they were going to the temple to, I guess, to evangelize, to witness to the Jews there. As Peter and John was going to the temple, <coughs> they encountered a lame man. So as they encountered the lame man, they healed this lame man. Now, after healing this lame man, Peter and John was proclaiming the gospel. They were preaching the gospel. And so the temple guards and the Sadducees see that uh, Peter and John was preaching, they were teaching in the temple. They decided to arrest them because they didn't want to cause a riot. And then so they arrested the next day, they brought Peter and John to the Sahedrin. Okay, we remember what is the Sahedrin? It was basically the highest Jewish court. It was filled with 71 uh, religious leaders. They were there basically uh, to uh, uh, interrogate uh, Peter and John. And while they were interrogating Peter and John, Peter again preach the gospel okay so let's read verse 13 it says this now as they observe the confidence of Peter and John okay they who is they they are the Sahedrin they are the 71 religious leaders they were um, observing Peter and John so the word observe basically means they were watching, they were examining Peter and John as they, as they were watching, examining what was their objective. Remember, they brought Peter and John to Sahedrin to do what? They didn't bring it there because they wanted to seek truth. Man, these two guys, they heal this lame man. We want to know about their message. No, they weren't there to be taught. You know? They weren't there to seek forgiveness. What do you mean by seeking forgiveness, Pastor? It was the Sanhedrin that charged Jesus Christ guilty. So they didn't bring Peter and John there because they wanted to ask him for forgiveness. No, they brought them there. Why? The truth is they brought them there because they wanted to cast fear. They wanted to threaten Peter and John. They wanted to do what? They wanted to intimidate Peter and John. They wanted to hush Peter and John. They wanted to prevent Peter and John from preaching, from proclaiming the gospel. So they decided to bring them to the highest Jewish court and surrounded them with 71 of their buddies, of their religious leaders, and they wanted to threaten, they wanted to intimidate Peter and John. Can you imagine? Who has uh, the fear of public speaking? Raise your hand. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. Can you imagine just public speaking? Now, can you recall the first time you come up here on the stage just to give an announcement or to, a, to do a prayer or to do a special song? You, you, you're kind of shaking, right? Yeah. But just imagine you're surrounded by over 70 people and they were to interrogate you, ask you, why are you teaching about this man named Jesus? So, you know, if it was me, I would be like, oh man, I'll be sweating. Every Sunday, come up on stage, you now you get that goosebumps. You know, I still get that, uh, you know, that anxiety. Okay, I'm here to preach. 
And walking up stage, yes, I still get that anxiety, even though I've been preaching for over five, ten years. I still get that goosebumps. It's only natural. I remember preaching in a, in a room filled with thousands and thousands of people. The biggest audience that I've taught was at, at a Fresno New Year. I taught at a Fresno New Year, and you know how big Fresno New Year is. Thousands and thousands more people. It was very intimidating. I remember teaching, preaching in front of pastors. That was scary. That was intimidating. So you can just imagine how Peter and John felt. They were brought here, not because they were into, because the religious leaders were seeking to find truth. They weren't brought there because the religious leaders were seeking for forgiveness. No, they were brought there to be interrogated, to be intimidated, to be threatened. It's like, you know what? We killed your master. And we have every authority to do what? To kill you. Okay. And so, they brought Peter and John there. Now let's do a little, understand, a little study, a little uh, context as who is Peter and John. And what is their occupations? Occupations, and what kind of work, what kind of work did they do? What, what did Peter and John do? They were what? They were fishermen, okay? Jesus, when Jesus encountered Peter, where did he encounter Peter at? In the Sea of Galilee. In the Galilee. That's why, you know, in, in chapter uh, 2, these Galilean Jews, who are like the underclass Jews, uneducated Jews, go well, out because they were fishermen. You know, uh, a couple few years ago, I went to the Sea of Galilee, the uh, Sea of Tiberias. It was beautiful. Ate the fish there too. They call it the St. Peter's fish. The same fish that Jesus and his disciples ate. It was pretty cool. So there are fishermen. Okay? So when you think of the word fishermen, you think of uneducated people. You think of what? The commoners. The common people. So how were these fishermen viewed? Basically, we learned that the Galilean Jews were what? Uneducated. And they were what? Untrained. So we we'll read verse 13. Now as they observe what? Peter and John, what did they see? Confidence. The word confidence. It says the confidence of Peter and John understood that they were what? Uneducated and untrained. Why? These were Galilean Jews. Those who were uneducated. Those who had common jobs. But here's the thing. When they see them, they see these people, these two individuals, even though they were uneducated, they were untrained, they didn't have no, uh, no rabbinical uh, training. What did they see in these two individuals? They saw that they were filled with what? Confidence. It says, now as they observe the confidence of Peter and John, who were these Galilean Jews, they were what? Amazed. Well, look at it. The word confidence is what? It's the, the assurance, the being bold and courageous. We learned the last couple of weeks through this chapter, Peter and John was confronted by the Sahedrin, and Peter was bold enough to say what? It was you guys that crucified Jesus Christ. But here's the thing, this Jesus Christ didn't stay dead, but he was resurrected. And now he is resurrected, he is the what? He is the chief cornerstone of our faith. So it was you guys. Man. Peter and John accused the accusers. They were there to threaten, to intimidate, but instead of being uh, I guess be little instead of being shamed they were with confidence they were with confidence that's some boldness right there church that was some boldness and then we learn how did the Jewish leaders how did these Sahedrins respond 
It says this, Now as they observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men, they were what? How would they respond? They were amazed. They were amazed. Why were they amazed? It says this, And began to recognize them as being with who? Why were they amazed? Because they were with Jesus Christ. And John chapter 7 verse 14 through 15 says what? Well, this is Jesus. Okay? But when it was now the midst of the feast, Jesus went up to the temple and began to teach. The Jews were then were astonished saying, How has this man become learned having never been? educated. Their master amazed these Jewish rabbis who were educated when they were young. All their lives, all they did was study the word of God. And these Jewish rabbis witnessed Jesus in the temple proclaiming and teaching and preaching the word of God. And these Jewish leaders, they were amazed of Jesus. And guess what? They were amazed with Jesus' apostles as well. Why? Because they reminded of who? Of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it says this, and began recognizing them as having been with Jesus. Church, all believers can bring glory to Jesus Christ. All believers can bring glory to Jesus Christ. Okay? All believers can be glory, can bring glory to Jesus Christ. And I want to ask you as a church, have you ever been intimidated because of your status, because of who you are? Yeah. But don't let that hinder you from bringing glory to Jesus Christ. Here in this text, the apostles, Peter and John, they were proclaiming, they were teaching the gospel. And then the, the Jewish leaders decided to intimidate, decided to threaten them by hushing them. But instead, they were more bold, more courageous. And what did they do? They proclaimed the gospel, said, it was you guys that killed this man. But then this man was resurrected. Why? Because God glorified this man named Jesus. Amen to that. There is no excuse at bringing God glory. Okay? Here's the thing. Here's the application. This is going to be a very short sermon. Alright? <laughs> but I want you guys to understand this. All believers can glorify God. All believers can bring Jesus glory. And here's this myth. Here's this myth I want us to understand. We live in this myth as of what? Only the educated can bring glory to God? Only the educated can bring glory to God? We understood that, that what kind of people were uh, Peter and John. They were Galilean Jews. Basically, they were uneducated. They were untrained. They didn't have no, uh, no formal education. They didn't go to uh, some rabbi school. No, they didn't. There's another method. Only those with high social status can bring glory to God. You've got to have a, 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 a high title. You've got to be a Greek you got to be a high, sophisticated individual to bring glory to God. These individuals, they were just commoners. They were just fishermen. You need to be like a, uh, like a Pharisee or a Sadducee. you got to be a Jewish leader to glorify God. Well, that is a myth. Here's another one. Only mature believers can glorify God. So if you are baptized today, you are what? 
We, we, we call that in our transformation stage, there's a, what, a four transformation. The first one is what? The egg, who is uh, reborn again, who is considered an immature Christian, then you become a what? A uh, uh, larva, and then you become a cocoon, and you become a butterfly. So if you are in the stage of an egg or a larva, you can't glorify God. If you are a young, new believer who's just been baptized, you cannot glorify God. That is a myth. That is only myth. You don't need to be a pastor to be able to glorify God. You don't need to have a title in the church to glorify God. You don't need to be mature in your faith to, be, to glorify God. I hear it countless times. Um, I can't teach, so I can't bring, I can't glorify God. I can't play music, I can't lead music, so therefore I can't glorify God. I don't know how to pray, therefore I don't know how to glorify God. That is a myth. Here's the truth. Here's the truth. God can use what? Both educated and uneducated to glorify God. I don't want us to mix this up. When, I see, when we read the text, it's, Luke writes that the uneducated Peter and John brought God glory. Okay? It doesn't mean that God don't use the educated individual to bring him glory. No. God used who? The uneducated, like Peter and John, to bring him glory. But God also used the educated to bring him glory too as well. In scripture, who are the educated individuals? We will soon read about Moses. Where did Moses grow up? Did Moses grow up in the slums? No. He grew up where? In the palace. He's what? So called the prince of Egypt, right? So he was educated. He was smart individuals. Did he bring God glory? Yes, he did. The Apostle Paul, in the New Testament, he brought uh, God glory. The Apostle Paul was well trained in the Word. He studied under the teachings of Gamaliel. He was what? Consider what? Was he a fisherman? No, he was what? He was a Pharisee himself. He was an educated individual. So God can use the uneducated and the educated to bring him glory. Amen. There's no excuse. So you feel like, oh, I don't have that training. So therefore, I can't be used by God. Yes, you can be used by God. Amen. But for those who feel like, you know what? I'm too, uh, I'm, I'm too educated. Well, you used your education to bring him glory. Amen. Like I share, for those who have your, who acknowledge and know your spiritual gifts, if you are talented, if you are a gifted in certain areas, use those gifts to bring Him glory. Amen. But for those who don't know your spiritual gifts yet, that still does not give you an exemption from serving God. You can serve God without knowing your gifts. You can serve God without having any special, unique talents. Amen to that church? God used those who he blessed and gifted and God used those who he hasn't uh, those individuals who hasn't been able to understand where their skill sets. So God used both educated and uneducated. From Peter who is a fisherman to the Apostle Paul. We'll learn more about the Apostle Paul. How he brought the, uh, the gospel to whom? To the Gentiles. It was Apostle Paul that brought the gospel to us. We are the Gentiles. And the Apostle Paul, he wasn't a, an uneducated person. No, he was a very smart individual. Okay? Here's another truth. No, God just doesn't use the high status, or he just doesn't use the low status like the fishermen. No, he used all status. He goes beyond status. Amen? It doesn't matter if you grew up in the church all your life, or it, just, it doesn't matter if you just became a Christian yesterday. You got that? 
God can use you to bring Him glory. Who wrote this book? The book of Acts. Who wrote it? It was Luke. Was Luke a Jew? Luke was a Gentile. Amen to that? So God used the Jews, the the the, the um, the descendants of Abraham. We study about Abraham, God's chosen people, right? God used Abraham, God's chosen people, and God can use the Gentiles, Luke, to do what? To write the word of God. Amen. It doesn't matter your social status. It doesn't matter your ethnicities. God can use you. Amen. You don't need to be a high class person. You don't need to be a wealthy individual who making this maybe six figures. God just use six figures income families only, Christians only. No, you can be just an average American or average individuals and bring Him glory. Amen. We don't need to be a a, a million dollar budget church to bring Him glory. We don't need to be a mega church to bring Him glory. Amen. We could use a house church, a small church of 20-some people to bring Him glory. Amen. It doesn't matter. God used these fishermen to bring Him glory. The Sahedrin, they were amazed, not because of these status, they were amazed. Why? Because they were with Jesus. Amen. So don't let your status deter you from bringing God glory. Just because you're single doesn't mean God can't use you. Amen to that? You know how many countless of times people say you're single so you are unqualified to you be used by God. Okay? That is a myth. You can be a single individual to bring God glory. You could be a single mother or a single father to bring Him glory. Amen. You can be a couple that bring Him glory. Priscilla and Aquila. We learned about that, right? In the New Testament. We'll study more about them. Okay? So it doesn't matter your social status. Okay? Or you could be someone like Timothy. You know, Timothy, who was raised by... What? By a single mom. The Bible doesn't really clarify what happened to his father, but he was raised by a single mother and his grandma. You don't need to have a, a, a uh, you don't need to use the skills. Well, I didn't grow up in a church family. We didn't grow up in a Christian family, therefore, I, uh, I'm not entitled. I didn't get that benefits. Don't use that as a crutch. Don't use that as an excuse. Because God can use Timothy's mom to raise her son. Amen. He can use you guys. There's no excuse in bringing God glory. If God can, just don't use the status that I'm a woman, therefore God cannot use me to bring him glory. Well, have you ever read the book of Esther? For those who ever read the book of Esther, Esther is the Cindy's favorite book. Have you seen the movie Esther? Yes. You guys know about Esther. Who is Esther? She was a Jewish uh, Jew that what happened? Saved her people. She brought glory by doing what? By rescuing her people. She was a woman. You don't need to be a man to bring God glory. God can use women and men. God can use single parents or a family as a whole. God can use uh, those who are Gentiles or God can use those who are Jews. God can use those who are Hmong. Amen to that? Don't buy into that lie because you're Hmong. You can't do the work of the ministry because you're not white. Because you're not what, black? Just because you're not Jews? We've studied through the book of Romans. The gospel is for who? For the Jews and Greeks. 
for the Jews and Gentiles. Amen. There's no excuse in bringing God glory. God can use both mature and immature believers for his glory. God can use both mature and immature believers for his glory. In this text, verses 13, who are the mature believers? Mature believers is Peter and John. The, the, the Sahedrins, the Jewish leaders, they were amazed at who? Peter and John. Why? Because they were uneducated and untrained. Why were they amazed? Because they recognized them as being with Jesus. But who is the immature individual? Verse 14. Let's read. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they had nothing to reply. Who is this man? That verse 14 Luke is referring to? He is the lame man. When did he become a Christian? When did he believe in Jesus Christ? Yesterday. Remember? The, the apostle Peter and John proclaimed the gospel. He believed. They proclaimed the gospel to everyone. And then the Jewish leaders... They arrested him and they waited until the next day to try him. So he was a new believer that just believed the following day. And because he was there, it wasn't just John and Peter that was being tried. In the text, it says what? The man who had been healed standing with them. This newly believer, what did he do? He brought glory to God by being with who? By standing with whom? Peter and John. You don't need to be a Christian five years. You don't need to be a Christian ten years. You don't need to be a Christian all of your life to bring God glory. If you just got baptized today, you can bring glory to God today. Amen? There's no excuse Time should not be an excuse to bring God glory. You are able to breathe. You can bring God glory. So let's read. We learn that Jesus silenced his accuser. How did Jesus silence his accuser? This is what Jesus did. He accurately preached the word of God. What did he do? His preaching was supported by his works. In Matthew chapter 22, in this chapter, the Sadducees, the same Jewish leader, Sadducees, tried to challenge Jesus about the topic of resurrection. Okay? The topic of resurrection. But Jesus rebuked them. And then the Pharisees, in this chapter, Challenge Jesus about the greatest commandment. Which was the greatest? And Jesus rebuked him. He said, which of the ten commandments is the greatest? And Jesus responded, the greatest is this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbors as yourself. So in Matthew chapter 22, 20, verse 36, how did, uh, how did they respond? It says this. No one was able to answer him a word. Nor did anyone dare from that day on to ask him another question. So Jesus silenced his accusers by teaching, preaching the word accurately. And not just that, he supported his teaching, preaching through his actions. We read through the gospel. If you ever read through the gospel, how did Jesus support his um, teachings with his actions? By healing those who were sick. By restoring those who are broken. And they were silenced. What can they do? So here's my challenge, church. Myth. Your calling in life is to what? bring you glory? If you live today and your life is all about you, then you miss the point. As a believer, if your life is all about you, 
you missed your calling. The truth is this. Our calling is to do what? Is to bring Jesus glory. Okay? Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 says what? Let your light shine before men in such a way that when they see your good works, they may do what? Glorify your Father who is in heaven. Okay? Our job as believers is to bring God glory. Our responsibility as believers is to proclaim the gospel. Is to preach the good news. So here's the thing. How, as a, as a believer, how can I bring glory to Jesus? How can I bring glory to God? Simple. One. Accurately handle God's word. Accurately handle God's word. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And then number two. As we actually handle God's word, as we read and study the word, we do what? We live according to the word. We live according to the word. That's why here at God's Mount Baptist Church, we emphasize on what? On studying the word, knowing the word, teaching and preaching the word. One of our core values is what? Relevance. The church is... Uh, future, our ministries, our church ministries, it filter not because of what society says, not what our family says, and not because of what the leader says. No, our church is filtered to what? What the Bible says. That's what we emphasize a lot about hermeneutics. We emphasize a lot about how to read the word accurately. And then we encourage individuals to live what we study. Put it into practice. Put it into practice. Here, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says what? Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed. Accurately handling the word. That's why during life group, I like to give you feedbacks. I want to help you to actually handle the word of God. Amen. I don't give you feedback because I want to put you down. Now I'll give you feedback as a pastor because I want you to continue to improve in your hermeneutics and your study. Amen to that church. That's why we as a church, we should encourage each other to better do what? Accurately handle the word of God. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 says what? Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Show yourself an example of those who live. Live according to the word. How should we live according to the word? Love, faith, purity. Who is the Apostle Paul talking to? He's talking to Timothy. You want to glorify God? Study his word. That's what the Apostle Paul says. As a pastor, as a young pastor, the Apostle Paul is talking to Timothy. He's a young pastor. He's a young leader. And the Apostle Paul is encouraging him to do what? Study the word. Because he's a young, belief, young leader, he will be challenged because of his, his youthfulness. So the Apostle Paul encouraged Timothy to do what? Don't let them judge you by your youthfulness, but let them judge you how you conduct yourself. How should you conduct yourself? Live a life of love, faith, and purity. That's how we bring glory to God. Amen? So Christians, there's no excuse from you to not bring God glory. Don't let your age hinder you from bringing God glory. Don't let your status hinder God, uh, hinder you from bringing God glory. Don't let your gender hinder you from bringing God glory. Amen. You can be a mature Christian. You can be a young, new believer. You can bring God glory. Amen to that. So when they see you, Hopefully, who do they see? That what? That Jesus lives with you. Amen? So let us pray.